Thank you. Thank you. And I call Steve Aiken. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I rise as leader of the Ulster Unionist Party to support the motion and amendment passing the legislative consent motion on the coronavirus bill. And may I also join with others in passing on our condolences to the bereaved. The need for this legislation is unfortunately a regrettable necessity, and we need it to safeguard all of our people here in Northern Ireland. In normal circumstances, a bill of this magnitude and impact would warrant many weeks of detailed scrutiny and would raise a considerable number of questions, not least in its scope and impact. However, these are not normal times, and in view of the global impacts of COVID-19, it is important that we fast-track this necessary legislation to allow our government, our departments, and those who provide vital public services the legislative power to do what is required. But the reason we need to do this is not just because of the virus, but also because of the actions of an irresponsible, irresponsible minority who seem incapable of understanding even the most basic requirements of keeping all of us safe. That the simplest of message, messages, clear though that they are, seems to be missing. Many who think that in some way they are immune or will only be moderately infected demonstrates not only a cavalier attitude to their own health, but selfishly about their family, friends, and the very many vulnerable in our society. And for those who think going to an outdoor market at a disused airfield, having a rave on a beach, or breaching social distancing at house parties, there is bad news for you. Over a third of those with COVID-19 are under the age of 40. Two thirds are under the age of 70. You cannot say that you have not been warned. It is now indisputable that many are going to die, that many will have their health irreparably damaged, and that only by direct action by everyone that this toll of morbidity will be reduced. I fear that only when the death toll rises will that selfish and ignorant minority realise that they have exacerbated this health crisis, by which stage it may be too late. But even at this late stage, we can change our attitude, our approach, and just by doing the appropriate social distancing, washing hands, not panic buying, and listening to advice, everyone has the opportunity to be a lifesaver. To all those watching and listening, act now and become a lifesaver. Now, turning specifically to the LCM, there are several issues that we are raising about specific parts of the legislation, and our party spokespersons will have raised these issues in committees or directly with the departments, but they are worthy of noting here. In the context of what were to be the two-year scope of the bill, we welcome amendments that have been brought in Westminster yesterday that will review, allow review every six months. Even a cursory examination of the bill shows that it gives considerable powers to the executive and to individual ministers to take actions that could, if not used judiciously, be seen to be taking away rights and liberties that we have all enjoyed. But, Mr Speaker, we are not living in normal times, and hopefully we will be able to step back from many of the provisions within the Act, but we must be prepared, not just for now, but for the medium and the longer term as well. But we welcome the opportunity to revisit this le legislation in six months as I believe will the people of Northern Ireland who would be rightly concerned if these provisions prevailed unnecessarily. My friend and colleague Mike Nesbitt will re be referring in more detail to some of these issues later on in the debate. But to paraphrase, provisions on mental health, on the registration or should I say re-registration of medical staff, the need to ensure continuity of food, su food supply, restrictions on public gatherings and powers to detain potentially infected people are just some of the areas my party will be paying special attention to over the forthcoming weeks and months. That is to ensure the intent of this necessary legislation is not abused. At this juncture, I and my party would like to give our heartfelt thanks to all our health staff and those across the public and voluntary sectors who have unstintingly risen to the challenge of COVID-19. This indeed shows the best of our society, joined together for us all. It is their spirit, supported by the people of Northern Ireland, that will help us prevail. 
Finally, Mr. Speaker, I would like to direct my comments to the Northern Ireland Executive. Over the last 72 hours, we have now seen a commendable and much-needed solidarity of approach. The Ulster Unionist Party will play its role in making sure that there is strong support for the Northern Ireland Executive. For our excellent Health Minister and his department, other government ministers, government departments and our very system of government itself. We will be tested heavily in the coming weeks and, let us be honest, months ahead. But I and my team across Northern Ireland will help to do what is right for all of our people, regardless of the challenges ahead. Mr Speaker, we support the measure and the amendment. Thank you. And I call Paula Bradshaw. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I'd like to start by placing on record my sincere